And we're back. I'm here with the one and only Kendra. Hi. <laughs> Hallie. Hello. Sarah. I'm not one and only. I mean, not there's today. so many Sarahs. Yeah. I never was in a class with Got Kendra. Him. Yeah, <laughs> take a bag. Who are you? One of many. I'm one of many. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm one of I'm one of the I'm a bro for row. That's what I am today. Thank I'm a bro you for row. I am the only Sarah Crooked now. It took a while. Yeah, I there really like I was five actually, for a minute there. I was thinking about oh, yeah. that today that like I instinctively still call you Lazarus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because there were so many Sarahs for a time. And now you're the only one. No. We can just call you Sarah. Good. Yeah, but I think having a Z in your first name really elevates your level of coolness. Yeah. It's yeah, a cool I'm, last name. I'm good either way. Laz. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It's a good last name. Thank you. It it evokes it evokes um coming rising, back. Rising from the dead. Uh it evokes Emma Lazarus. Mm-hmm. It evokes no relation. No relation, which we've already dis- we've discussed in the past. So it evokes the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's get into it. What a weekday! The moment has arrived. RFK Jr. finally picked a running mate on Tuesday, and a huge congrats to our next vice president, one of the raccoons from Grey Gardens. <laughs> Having a vice president on the ticket shows that he's moving forward, the co-founder of RFK's Super PAC told The Hill. Voters then get to see that he's very serious about becoming president. I guess that's true in the same way that buying a plane ticket to Paris shows that you're very serious about becoming the first person to eat the Eiffel Tower. That's not really the part people have doubts about. Reports said that his shortlist included anti-vax football person Aaron Rodgers, actress and comedian Roseanne Barr, and former Minnesota governor and professional wrestler Jesse Ventura. One of those three names was not actually on the shortlist and was included by us. But the fact that it's not totally clear which tells you how dumb this all is. RFK Jr. ultimately selected lawyer Nicole Shanahan, former wife of Google co-founder Sergey Brin, who also helped fund RFK Jr.'s Super Bowl ad. I'm now going to read to you the last line of her Wikipedia. In 2023, Shanahan held a love ceremony of commitment with Jacob Strumwasser, who is an advisor at Lightning Labs, a Bitcoin software company. She described the event as a hand-fasting ceremony influenced by Druidic tradition. The pair met at Burning Man in summer 2022. Oh, my nose is bleeding. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry, I feel like that's like, um, if you read it out loud, that it does what that uh, that weapon does to your brain. Remember when everyone was getting their brains microwaved? Oh, Cuba syndrome oh, yeah. or whatever? Yeah, the Cuba syndrome, yeah. Havana syndrome. I feel yeah. like that sentence causes it. I, I think we got to... What's what was that thing from um, Escape from L.A. where it's like a bomb that destroys all electronics? We got to do that, but just oh, in like Silicon a, Valley. Oh, the uh, uh, oh the EMT. Yeah, yeah, we got to get that, is that localized. What's to where oh, that EMT, electromagnetic pulse. Yeah. 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 Let what us movie? know in the comments if you have one of those. Also, in the movie Goldeneye, there's an EMP. I love Goldeneye. I that love Goldeneye. Bond. I love the, the Goldeneye is awesome. And so the interesting thing about Goldeneye is if you go back and watch it, when Goldeneye came out, it felt like such a like a modern movie. Mm-hmm. But actually, if you go back and watch it, it's actually the last of the, of old, the old action classic. movies. It, it it feels like it's come from another era. I don't remember the movie as much as I remember the N64 game, oh, to be honest. Oh, please. Dude, just that game <laughs> yeah. was the best. <laughs> the best. And that game also had... Do you remember how they were like... Each level had different goals that if you completed them in a certain time or did certain things inside the level, you unlocked special weapons and other things? The reason I never finished the game. Right. Yeah. Did, because you can never do that. The last level, yeah. the last level, I think it was like three minutes. Yep. Did you, I couldn't do I, it. No, I've never done it. I like to finish things. And so because I couldn't do everything at every level, I just like, I, I would I get tried, frustrated and give up. I, it really was very, I, that was the one. It was that one. Remember, it was like the that last thing. It was the last thing you had to like get it done in a, on the yeah. hardest setting in a very short amount of time, and it meant you had to like fly through the level. It was yeah. impossible. My N64 is at home. I really should be reinvestigating this. Do you think that with age and wisdom, you might be able to do it, or do you think that we've lost the dexterity? So there's a game called, I want to say it's called Time Bandits. No, that's wrong. Someone help me. Time Bandits is the movie handheld. by- It's a handheld. There's four of them, Time something. I play it in arcade all the time. Time crisis, thank you. Okay. Hal, you want to get out oh, of here? Oh, time crisis. Okay, wait, wait. Where you play the arcade <laughs> yeah, with the, with the buttons, with, with red and blue, and you would like, right. yeah. So I've been playing a lot of time crisis recently, sure. and I'm <laughs> very, very good at it. So I'm wondering if that would help translate into, into N64. <sighs> Maybe. I. Hmm. Mm. Here's the problem with taking the electronics away from Silicon Valley. <laughs> They're just going to go further into steampunk. They're going to retreat further into But if they, all, if they want to all go to the desert and play if steampunk, they go that's man, great. 
Because last, remember the rain, yeah. if there's e- even more rain, then they're forced to stay out there. We I'm okay with that. We could lose Elon Musk in the desert. Yeah, that would be great for all of us. Any day now. Actually, Nicole Shanahan, the last time she was in the news, it was when there was a rumor that was reported publicly that there was a fallout between Sergey Brin and Elon Musk because Nicole Shanahan had had an affair with Elon Musk and that Sergey Brin had like begged for forgiveness. I may be getting the details of this wrong, but it was something like that. How is he pulling these women? I will say this without judgment. Gross. Yeah. Because these women are also insane. These are female Elon Musk that are like, yes, let's do this. Remember when um, there was a whole news cycle with all those people that were stuck in the mud at Burning Man trying to say, it's not actually mud. It's worse than mud. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I was going to go out with this woman um, and then she got stuck at Burning Man. And I'm like, you know what? This is maybe a sign that it just isn't going to work out between us. Yeah. That was a thing when I moved to LA and I was on dating apps here and realized that in New York, you could have want to go to Burning Man or have been to Burning Man as like a hard red flag and instantly disqualify those people. You can't do that in LA. Just so many mm. people go to Burning Man. Yeah. I've never been. But uh, yeah. I would go. I would. I don't think I'd go now, but I would. I could have gone. You in that mud? You would never. You're insane. Why would you do that? You'd die. I won't even go to Bonnaroo with my husband, who I love. They have porta potties. Okay. You're right. What was I thinking? It was the right decision not to go. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of people covered in mud and trying to figure out why their life has no meaning, on Friday, NBC announced that election denier Trump apparatchik and former Republican Party chair Ronna McDaniel, nay Romney, would join the network as a paid contributor. Weirdly, it was to provide commentary at the National Dog Show, and the backlash was immediate. What do you mean you can't wait to find out which breed is most delicious? What do you think this is, Ronna? <laughs> Journalists and anchors at NBC News were furious. McDaniel wasn't just the face of Trump's efforts to overturn the election. She was an active participant in the scheme. McDaniel even called GOP canvassers in Michigan on November 17th, 2020, and urged them not to sign the vote certification. The Detroit News reported on the call in which McDaniel reportedly tells two canvassers, if you can go home tonight, do not sign it, promising them we will get you attorneys. Now, One of those attorneys may be drunk and leaking black goo like a startled octopus, and he also may try to fuck you. But believe it or not, he was also once the mayor of New York City. (laughs) Now, post-job at the RNC, McDaniel's tune has changed. Less junta, more we shouldn't. Hell yeah. Got him. Got him. I want you to know something. I was alone in my home. As you mostly are. Mm -hmm. And that... (laughs) I made myself laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hunt her. More well, we shouldn't. Just sitting there Let's hunt her. More we shouldn't. What? S- sitting there with a Vision Pro giggling to yourself. Yeah, I was in my Vision Pro. <laughs> totally. So I wasn't alone. I was with my. So I was there was with a my cheering dino- audience. A cheering audience of di- there was a cheering audience of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Just high five and Tyrannosaurus <laughs> legs. Tiny, tiny arms. Yeah. Roar, a good one, John. They don't talk. They're all high fiving each other. Yeah. During her guest appearance on Sunday's Meet the Press, McDaniel rebuked Trump over his promise to pardon convicted January 6th insurrectionists, calling the Capitol riot unacceptable. When asked why she's only speaking out about January 6th now that she is no longer associated with the Republican National Committee, McDaniel offered this. When you're the RNC chair, you you kind of take one for the whole team, right? Now I get to be a little bit more myself, right? This is what I believe. Yeah, everybody, calm down. She didn't actually believe the election was stolen. She just pretended to think that for money and power. Unless she's just pretending to think the opposite now, also for money and power. I guess we'll never know. The important thing is most people get their news on TikTok. I hate when you have to put on a fake self for a job, you know? I never tried to overturn a national election I knew hadn't been stolen in order to install an authoritarian bozo who probably called me ugly behind my back, but I also did have to wear a suit to work. (laughs) And that stunk. So I get it. You told us about how you wore flip flops to the White House one time. Well, I would bike in, and so flip flops. Well, I, I, I sometimes would wear flip, but I would bike in, and then the bike was an excuse to be able to wear shorts and a t-shirt. That's what it was. So that I wouldn't sweat through my suit. But then I would get to my office, and I would try to go as long as I could without having to leave my office because if I, I haven't left my office, then I still can be in my shorts and t-shirt. But I can't leave my office in the shorts and t-shirt, I must change. So I'd basically try to make it all the way to lunch without putting on a suit. So, it yeah, no. had a UTI for your entire employment. <laughs> 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 yep, that's right. That's what I had. And that's why I left. I had to get out of there. Fair enough. For my health. Former Made the Press host Chuck Todd told current host Kristen Welker on air. Look, let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology. 
for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. So I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Said an NBC executive in response, that is so cynical, Chuck. What's next? Do you think dolphins don't love bouncing balls back and forth to each other on command and are only doing it for the fish? <laughs> you think Ronna, you think Ronna did this? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> for, I can't do the noise. What, what do they do? <laughs> That's our, that, you think that she's not doing that because she believes it? That's ridiculous. Anyway, speaking of Trump's election denying pals and their lawyers, according to page six, which is 100 percent reliable when the story is to our liking, Rudy Giuliani (laughs) told his fellow guests at a -a Mar-a-Lago event recently that he feels as if he's trapped in a, quote, nightmare world. (laughs) Wonderful. If you recall, Giuliani is facing bankruptcy due to the one hundred forty eight million dollar fine he received in December after being found guilty of falsely accusing two Fulton County poll workers of voter fraud. Giuliani allegedly told Mar-a-Lago guests that he, quote, Wakes up every day and can't believe it's real. (laughs) Isn't it funny that for Giuliani, being here with us is his nightmare, but for us, being here with him is our nightmare? Hmm. It it makes you wonder how could heaven be real, you know, in a sense. Like Like if Rudy Giuliani was in heaven, you'd be like, well, this can't be heaven by default. Right. I don't think he's going to heaven. Yeah, though. I don't. I, I have never. never so you're really saying that the only people that get to go to heaven are people that all want to see each other. But there are there are good people who can't stand each other. Yeah. There are heaven worthy people who fucking hate each other's guts. How can it be heaven if two people who hate the sight of each other can see each other? No, because that's, that's different that's, rooms. That's different rooms. Well, you can hate someone because you find them annoying, but still they're in heaven in a different room. Yeah. He's done something. He actively tried to overturn a democratic election that's why you're not going to heaven he, it's no, not because no. he's annoying it's well, he is annoying but also he's a bad person i appreciate that mm-hmm. i appreciate that i understand that this is in this analogy giuliani's never in heaven mm-hmm. yeah. but the fact that for us he's our nightmare and for him we're his nightmare i mean he's not my nightmare he's not really my nightmare he either, looks like point. a nightmare he's came to life he's at this point he looks I, like I, something I, that would appear in my nightmares yes. yes yes he does look like a sleep paralysis demon if, if I saw Rudy R- Giuliani in heaven, I would kill myself. So I guess I would go, go to hell then. <laughs> yeah. he, he's probably there too. Do you ever see the movie What Dreams May Come? Hell yeah. I really, that movie, it's, yeah. uh, let's, it's time we all take a moment <laughs> and give What Dreams May Come another shot. I think we were also, we were really struggled with Robin Williams making the dramatic turns. But if you go back and watch them, the uh, one, hour photo, one hour photo, great. photo Insomnia, great. Insomnia. Yeah, he's he's excellent. I think it was just like, we were we were riding the high. We were getting the, and then when he's like, no, I like to do something else. We're like, oh, please just do Mrs. Doubtfire 2. That's what we want you to do. We'll never get that Mrs. Doubtfire 2. Where Mrs. Doubtfire has to go undercover as, as Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, now, and, and who would it be? Susan Boyle? I'm like, who are we, who are we starting with? <laughs> Shout out to Susan Boyle. I listen to her cover of Wild Horses all the time. Really? Yes, even though she looks like Susan Boyle, she can't sing. I know we that, were all sh- shocked to hear about it. It Susan Boyle really put it, put Susan Boyle <laughs> in the time capsule because the whole premise of her celebrity mm. was: Can you believe? Can you believe what this woman looks like? Can you believe a woman that you don't want to fuck can sing? Like it's just like it has nothing to do with it whatsoever. It's like yes, I do. No, I absolutely like we, believe we, it. We of course know that. That's they're, they're like, like, yeah, we tricked ourselves into thinking that there has to be this correlation, but that's just a choice we made. Yeah, yeah we of course know that that's not the case. Just their faces, like realizing an ugly person can sing. <laughs> In a bl- I don't mean that anything bad as Susan Boyle. I'm just, you know, come uh, no, on. No, look, it was part of it. It was part of it. You can't, they, they, even in the moment, they couldn't discuss why they were so surprised because she was standing there. She violated yeah. so many rules that we all <laughs> live with. But, and it wasn't right. It wasn't just, um, it was like, it wasn't just that she wasn't uh, to their beauty standards. Right. It was that she was kind of um, kooky. Yeah, it was Lucky. that she she was like a little off kilter. Like it was like she, like like she just didn't fit in. It was that she, she wasn't trying to be beautiful. She right. wasn't making the effort. She seemed comfortable in her yeah. own skin, and that yes. was upsetting to people. Yes, it was that she didn't even care that she wasn't hot to Piers Morgan. No, what power? To not I care. want Piers Morgan to think I'm hot. That I'll admit that right now. I I want him to think I'm hot. Was I can't just help Morgan? it. What? I thought it was um, it was Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell. No, but Piers Morgan is on that is on that dais. Oh, I thought it was Simon. Check it in the comments. In my mind, it's Mel 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 C and um, B. I believe Mel Piers B. Morgan is the other person at that desk. We can check it. We'll check Please. it. We'll check it. <laughs> 
But shout out to Susan Boyle. You're doing great work out here. In a blow to our dreams of seeing New York's Trump Tower turned into the world's biggest gay bookstore, a New York mm-hmm. appeals court on Monday said it would accept a bond of $175 million, while Donald Trump appeals the full judgment of $454 million in a civil fraud case. Fine, I suppose you win this round, said New York Attorney General Letitia James, reluctantly giving Barron his Xbox back. <laughs> Trump has 10 days to secure the smaller bond, which he said he would do. New York State is being battered by his decision. So I greatly respect the decision of the appellate division, and I'll post either $175 million in cash or bonds or security or whatever is necessary uh, very quickly within the 10 days. It's super frustrating, but who knows? Kate Hudson was sure she could get Matthew McConaughey to dump her in 10 days, and we all know how that turned out. McConaughey had to travel through a wormhole to find a habitable planet and winds up falling into a five-dimensional tesseract. I may be getting my movies mixed up. (laughs) Meanwhile, in Trump's other Manhattan area legal proceeding, Judge Juan Mershon on Monday denied Trump's request to further delay his hush money trial, finalizing the April 15th start date. So too, our dear listeners in New York City with a jury duty letter in their hands, the time has come. (laughs) to do your public service. Don't lie, don't try too hard. The key is you gotta set your gob in such a way (laughs) that you seem like you go with the flow. You don't really have too many strong opinions. Like think about Mm -hmm. the face you make when you've had an edible, then just cut that in half, you know? It's like, (laughs) go super stoned, I'm gonna do it, I'll do it. And cut it in half. There we go. Juror face. Mm -hmm. Perfect, (laughs) inscrutable. Just sort of dead behind the eyes. Yeah. Not too eager. No. Not too reluctant. No. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, yeah, I, I kind of keep up with the news. A human bowl of soup. I'm open. I didn't I'm vote open. in the last election. That might Well, that, if it's true, we're not, we can't, no one's, mm. you shouldn't, can't lie. You can't we lie. We voted in the general, but he, what, some of the primaries maybe got past yeah. you. Yeah. He moved, yeah, he didn't re register. I don't know. know who the AG is. No. All right, that kind of thing. And also, you've just pissed your pants. You also piss yourself. <laughs> Trump called the decision by Judge Marchand election interference and pledged to appeal it, which he cannot actually do. (laughs) This is a pure case of voter intimidation and election interference. This was a case could have been brought three and a half years ago. And they decide to wait now, just during the election, so that I won't be able to campaign. I will be appealing this. Nothing is more frustrating to Trump than a process he can't corrupt. I was reminded of the expression, when you're accustomed to privilege, equality feels like oppression. And I feel like there's a Trump corollary, which is when you're accustomed to corruption, Mm -hmm. integrity feels like a crime. That he cannot believe that this is a process being rich and connected Mm -hmm. can't allow him to escape. Which, like, to be fair, I think, given examples, one understands why he thinks that. (laughs) For sure. There's a kind of like ugly kind of expression that I think appeals to someone like Trump, which is um, whoever has the most money is in charge that like in any room, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you look around like who's in charge is the person with the most money. And that used to be true everywhere without exception, including a courtroom. But it's actually not true in a courtroom anymore. And so him being the richest person in that room doesn't get him out of anything. He can't bribe people. He would be so happy in a Tammany Hall type New York. Mm-hmm. He'd be so happy in like a true corrupt old school and he came up, like, mafia he, that's system. That's when he got his power. Yeah, like, I mean, like his when he, in the 80s, it was like, I'm sure he would just throw money at whatever. Or, like, and get away with not throwing money at anything and not paying yeah. people to do right. shit. Like the New Jersey casino business. Yep. He can't believe he can't bribe his way out of this thing. Yeah, what do you mean I can't wink at this guy and it all goes away? Right, like like some 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 goon with a suitcase can't hand him can't hand get into somebody's car and be done with this. And it's hard because he does have so many goons. Like all these guys are from like you know rent a goon, <laughs> but you have to provide the suit. Yeah, you have to wear. This is yeah, the thing they about come being... naked and you have to dress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have no genitals. Don't worry, it's just like smooth. But you gotta clothe them. <laughs> It looks and it says it right there in the goon contract. These goons will arrive nude. They, these are nude goons. They don't want to hear you calling them. It's in the contract. Look, we used to send the goons clothes, but then sometimes you want different clothes, so we leave the clothes up to you. Suits, 
uh, 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 warm-up jackets. Primary we don't know colored what, ties. Yeah, we don't know what you want our goons to look like. So we cinnamon send... suits. The suits kept coming back dirty. You can't keep buying these goons hot dogs. <laughs> they get ketchup on the suits. Now it's your problem. Yeah. Oh, that, and that's another thing I want to remind you of. You're in charge. While the goons are in your custody, you got to feed the you goons. you got to feed them. We've been getting too many of these goons back hungry and thirsty, delirious. <laughs> Unwashed. We're getting dis- We're getting filthy, hungry goons back in these cages. And don't kiss them. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a concern? <laughs> don't kiss the goons. In the wake of this ruling, Trump also, in a post, compared his ordeal to the Stations of the Cross oh, and then quoted a psalm about how he was being persecuted unfairly. <laughs> the passage ends in reference to his unnamed accuser, let his days be few and let another take his office. If there's any doubt what Trump is saying here, the next lines, which he doesn't include in the post, say, let his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. Because of the comparison to Jesus, this was sorted into the Trump is a narcissist bucket. But I I do think not enough is being made of the part that belongs in the Trump is always threatening violence bucket. He is constantly saying that Biden is pulling the strings, that Biden is out there Mm -hmm. making these cases happening, that this is all Biden's big plan. And then he puts up a post that says, let his days be few, let his wife be a widow, let his children be fatherless. And then you remember... Trump tried to kill Biden with COVID. He had COVID and went to the debate and tried to kill him. Do you think Trump has like a beautiful little leather bound book called Psalms for Assholes? (laughs) It's just only Psalms for when you want to be a big jerk and still quote the Bible. Yeah, like the kind of the 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 like the inverse of the Jefferson Bible where he takes out the God and leaves just the kind of spiritual parts. Right. But for just the dickish portions of the Bible about smiting your enemies and so forth. The Biden campaign responded to Trump's news conference in a statement, and I'm going to read it in full because it was great. Donald Trump is weak and desperate, both as a man and a candidate for president. He spent the weekend golfing, the morning comparing himself to Jesus, and the afternoon lying about having money he definitely doesn't have. His campaign can't raise money. He is uninterested in campaigning outside his country club. And every time he opens his mouth, he pushes moderate and suburban voters away with his dangerous agenda. America deserves better than a feeble, confused, and tired Donald Trump. Come on. Come on. Our boy Joe. He's got it. Got it. I think what's not, at least nice about this moment in politics is like, we could finally admit you can't bullshit a bullshitter. Like, to me, it's like Trump, the emperor has no clothes. Let's just constantly be talking about how his dick's hanging out. You know what I mean, it's like there's no reason not to say all these things once you've gotten to the point where Trump has already been president, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. no like rising above this guy. You have to meet him on his stupid level. Yeah. 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 Uh, I would say we're about three official campaign statements away from Donald Trump fucks like your mom's ancient terrier listlessly humping the sofa. And we love that. That's where we're at. That's where we got to be. It's only March. I mean, I'll say that second paragraph, like that's a man that I would really enjoy watching on Bravo. That's where he belongs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this was all about. This is like talk about Rudy's nightmare. We are living in a nightmare. This was about goosing the ratings for The Mm -hmm. Apprentice eight years ago. (laughs) Yeah. That's what this all was about. We Roe is overturned because he was trying to goose the ratings of The (laughs) Fucking Apprentice. And we were all already watching. (laughs) This thing was very popular. That's what's crazy about it. (sighs) Never seen an episode. It had its moments. Oh, all right. Speaking of gross couplings, all right. On Monday, Trump. I tried. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think it was good. It's from the terrier thing. No, it was from the terrier thing. It was from the terrier thing. Remember the terrier humping the couch? Mm -hmm. Speaking of gross couplings, on Monday, Trump Media announced his merger with the publicly traded shell company Digital World Acquisition Corp. Trump Media, the owner of Truth Central, began trading on the stock market on Tuesday under the ticker symbol DJT. Trump's stake in the company rose to a value of $6 billion on paper. But he's barred from selling his shares for six months, and the company itself is not only losing money, it has never explained how it could ever achieve a level of growth, revenue, profitability commensurate with what the valuation currently is. The deal was made possible by right-wing megadonor Jeffrey Yoss, whose firm owns a $20 billion stake in the company that owns TikTok, After meeting with Yas, Trump, who once issued an executive order to try to ban TikTok, now is against a ban. What do you get the conservative billionaire who has everything? You get him Donald Trump jumping out of a box with a bow on it like a golden retriever puppy at Christmas. 
They just he just bought the guy. He just bought him. He just don't. Just bought him. There is a Yas Queen joke, but we just haven't nailed it. No, we'll I get know. To, we'll Trump get to has him. been Yasified into <laughs> Trump has okay. been Yasified into supporting TikTok. In other thrilling triumphs, Trump announced on Sunday that he was the golf champion of the world. Wrote the former president on True Social, it is my great honor to be at Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach tonight, awards night, to receive the club championship trophy and the senior club championship trophy. I won both. (laughs) So exciting. Anyway, I'm thrilled to announce that I've just received the Crooked Media Award for Best Gay Jewish Podcast Host Over 40 and the Crooked Media Award for Chillest Handsomest Boss. I'm very honored. Thank you all for voting. And I've told HR to unfreeze your paychecks. Oh, thank God. The the voting was rigged. I still am taking the win. <laughs> Continue, Trump. A large, a large and golfing talented membership. <laughs> a great and difficult course made the play very exciting. The qualifying and match play was amazing. Very exciting. Thank you. President Biden quote tweeted Trump's post writing, congratulations, Donald. Quite the accomplishment. I like and I do like his bitch era. Yeah, Biden's yeah. in his bitch era. I hate how much we're talking about golf. I hate golf. I hate it so much. I think it's the dumbest sport. I never want to hear it mentioned. It's an environmental disaster. That too. I just like just get a divorce. If you want to spend every if if you're oh. if you want to go out leave your house for four hours without being reachable and have a good excuse, just get a divorce. Also, mm. you can just take a walk with your boys. Yeah, you can, can just go for a walk with your friends. Nice. I'm sure go people, to the park. For me, it's also like if I'm going to do a sport, yeah, like golf is a sport that you can play every day for your whole life. And when you go to the doctor, the doctor will say, you got to exercise. <laughs> well, and like, if anything, it's going to fuck you up more than like speaking as someone who took a swing last summer the first, for the first time in like a decade. That shit hurts. <laughs> yeah. I look, I look at people like golf. Great. Have, have at it. I don't, you know, I'm not, it's not for me. I don't judge. I'm not going to yuck somebody else's yum. Uh, but, uh, there is a kind of, um, there is something about the length of it and the way it kind of like creates a permission structure for like, I golf, I'm out. My parents were deals are made on the golf course people. So they made me take golf lessons as a child. And the trauma of going to the place for your lesson, being like, I'm a lefty and then have them spend 20 minutes digging around in the closet for a lefty club has never left me. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry that happened to you. Thank you. Were there any other ways in which you were different that maybe had an impact on what it was like to be a young person <laughs> golfing at this fucking golf course in New Jersey? I mean, it was in like a country club. Right. Yeah, I say we set all the golf courses on fire. That's what I think. <laughs> I do like mini golf. I think that's the right version of oh, golf. Mini golf. With a windmill? When it hits, when you're having a good time, it's the best. Mm-hmm. I do think, though, my, my thing, though, is I don't want to play mini golf if we're not taking it seriously. No. I want to keep score. I want to be accurate. I'm not just here to putt around and have a good time. I am going to have a good time, but I want to fucking contest. You're not picking up the ball and putting it in a better spot. We're playing. We're playing and we're betting. Oh, I didn't know there was money riding on it. We're (laughs) betting. (laughs) We're betting dinner after. We're playing for something. We're playing for keeps. (sighs) Can we just have fun? No. I'm in between. I think you play seriously, but there's no stakes. Constantly reasonable. Constantly the voice of reason. Sorry, it's unbelievable. God bless. Sorry, I don't want to go mini golfing with you. Just a stop you know what, asking you know, us to go mini golfing. You with know what? You. The, here's here's fundamentally the issue with uh, love it or leave it. We got two kinds of people mm-hmm. on this show: ids and super egos. Ooh, very which, one, it, yeah, which, wait, which one is which? Point what? <laughs> Kendra super ego, Hallie id, Sarah super ego, and I'm id. Mm-hmm. I can see that. I think id is just in terms of being a performer. I think there's something there. I think we're just all, like we're just sort of like kind of. We need our galumphing, num-nums. galumphing, chaotic figures. Yeah, knocking yeah. stuff over. Absolutely. Yeah, and then and like Kendra and 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 Lazarus bring a level of control and discipline and kind of shape. Mm-hmm. You know, we played sports as a child. Yeah. I did too. I just was bad at them and I hated it. Yeah, for sure. Which is why I don't like this whole the mini golf thing. I don't want. Let's let's not compete. Who cares? Oh, I, I do think it's compete. important to note that. All three of us are horse girls, which is another way we can yeah. divide. Yeah, it's horse true. girl, oh, wow. not horse girl. I'm not a but horse I would say girl. I didn't like the horse. I, 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 my relationship <laughs> with the horse was that I thought it was a dog, and I didn't understand why we'd ride it or do anything else <laughs> but hang out. My dad is a horse girl. Really? <gasps> yeah. That's cute. Huh. Yeah. We should go riding. 
Next time he's out. Yeah, you go to bond with him. I, 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 finally I, I, bond with your father and finally have one meaningful conversation with him before he right. dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus. <laughs> I, of course, that's everyone's father. I mean, it's not personal. They just don't like talking. I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, in other news, Congress came dangerously close to causing a shutdown, with the White House waiting for the spending bill to pass the Senate ahead of the midnight deadline. The White House received the $1.2 trillion spending package at approximately 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Luckily, it coincided perfectly with the president's nightly fifth piss. In reality, by 2 a.m., Biden is usually clocked out for the day and has retreated to his private quarters to watch old tapes of his dogs mauling Secret Service agents. <laughs> According to Biden, the bill rejects extreme cuts from House Republicans and expands access to child care, invest in cancer research, funds mental health and substance use care, advances American leadership abroad and provides resources to secure the border that his administration successfully fought to include. It also keeps to spending levels that got Kevin McCarthy ousted from the speakership last year. And so, following the passage of the spending bill, Marjorie Taylor Greene filed a motion which could force the same kind of vote that led to McCarthy's downfall, threatening Speaker Mike Johnson with removal if he continues to work with Democrats and passes a Ukraine funding bill opposed by the far right. That's what you get for making Marjorie Taylor Greene your accountability partner. Ah. Oh, seen here is a photo of Marjorie Taylor Greene watching the zone of interest. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she has so many teeth. So many. It's like double the amount. It's like Did AI you see teeth. that uh, that uh, there was a rumor that she had appeared on, I believe, American Idol? I've seen oh, that really? video. Under a pseudonym. It's not actually true, but it does look just it like, does her. Look like her. And it was Susan Boyle? <laughs> <laughs> she could really sing. MTG also said her motion is more of a warning than a pink slip, and she doesn't want to throw the House into chaos so soon after last fall's speaker debacle, during which the House was without a speaker for three weeks. Continued Green, at least not that kind of chaos. I've glued photos of Hunter Biden's hog to several actual live hogs that I plan to release into the Capitol tunnels, <laughs> and I would hate to pull focus from that. <laughs> Matt Gates, voice of reason, told reporters he's against ousting Johnson as he fears some Republicans would vote for a Democrat. Said Gates, we'd have Republicans cross over. I worry that we've got Republicans who would vote for Hakeem Jeffries at this point. I really do. I take no joy in saying that. Continued Gates, I get my joy from saying things like, it's actually pronounced Bombardier. And sure, it's seat six, but yeah, it is a little tight. Why don't you scooch on over here next to me, darling? I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Mike Johnson scoffed when asked about his potential removal ahead of Friday's government shutdown bill, said the speaker, I don't operate from fear. Continued Johnson, fear is too close to sexual arousal. A lot of the physical symptoms are the same. Sometimes I'll see a picture of a naked woman by accident, by accidentally typing in boobs.com or whatever. And it's like, am I aroused or am I scared? And I can't even tell. Except for when I'm using my new web search monitoring app, Pornopticon. Pornopticon, we saw that. <laughs> And to close this out, here is figure skater Ilya Malinin doing a quad axle to the Succession theme song. Oh, he does the quad axle! Oh my gosh, wow, that was magnificent. He made history with it. He now makes it consistently achieved. This is the part of the show where we turn to figure skating expert Kendra James to tell us why that sucked. <laughs> it's not... To be clear, <laughs> nothing about his skate sucked. Okay. Mm -hmm. He is a very good skater. Sure. Let's get that out of the way. Sure. Mm -hmm. Very a technically accomplished skater. Yeah. We're there. We're, yeah we're we agree. Yeah. No. But. My issue. You have an issue. My issue overall is his component scores. Oh. And what he, so, okay. There's two, there. <laughs> It's like she's over, like like she can't get it out fast enough. Yeah. This okay. Is I'm that... trying to condense. Okay, so there's two there's two scores that you get in figure skating. Uh -huh. One is the technical stuff, which is uh, the imagine stuff you're is... telling us this and the room is filling with water. Yeah. So one is the technical <laughs> stuff, which is like all of the jumps that you're putting in the program, and then the step sequences and the spin combos, all of that. <laughs> That's not going to make this go faster. <laughs> um, so he's excellent at that stuff, but you get each. So that quad axle, I think, is worth yeah, it's worth twelve point five points. Then you get a grade of execution. You see his grade of execution as of that moment is 4.25. I think that went up or down. My thing with him is he, while he is so accomplished technically, he does not bring an emotional gravitas to Ugh, his programs. And I hate that. And well, I do hate that because skaters like him are pushing jumps forward. I've talked about this on the show before. They're pushing for these quads. He's talking quints next year. Oh, wow. we're Not, talking quints, people. Yeah. That's five times around in the well, air. For, no, for an axle, it's five and a half times around Five in the and air. a half oh. times because yeah. you start facing forward, you end up facing backward. Correct. Mm -hmm. He's not talking quint axles, but... <laughs> 
Quint. He's not talking Quint Axles, but he's talking Quint other jumps. And I just, it's, that I think lot. there's a, a, the skater who came in fifth for the second year in a row, Jason Brown. This was world championships, by the way. Mm-hmm. So he is Jason Brown, fifth best male skater We've in the We've all world. drowned, just so you know. Huh? We're dead. We've drowned. We've all drowned. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. You, uh, you. <laughs> but now we're in heaven learning more about yeah, it. Yeah, now, now we're, we're all like, dead in heaven. Like, glug, 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 tell us more. You, okay. So <laughs> Jason Brown came in fifth. Jason Brown had the highest component score. Your component score encompasses skating skills, composition of the program, and how well you perform it overall. Mm-hmm. He not only had the highest component score of the men's competition, he had the highest component score of the competition. So pairs, dance, women's, mm-hmm. men's. He his own that was only his third competition this year. Most people have been competing since the fall. Jason Brown went and did shows all year, which sort of uh, brings out more of that like component score because you're mm. performing to an audience, not to judges. I think he's too young to do that because Ilya is like 17 at this point. Oh. So he really does have his old career ahead of him. But I think it would be so beneficial for him to go do a season of shows to like try to build like up. Like ice some capades? Of, uh, skate, like um, uh, Stars like, on Ice. Like uh, Frozen fun. the Musical? No, Stars on Ice. Stars on Ice. Stars on Ice. But it's like that kind of thing. Uh, he's not doing like Disney shows. He's doing just like traveling skating shows. Um, but I think that that would benefit him so much because while his component scores have improved, for me, watching him, it just like, it doesn't bring anything out in me. Yeah, me neither. Right, it's, t- it's lifeless. It's yeah, technical. and then for me, like, what's then annoying is like everyone comes into work yesterday and is like, did you hear Uh-oh. about this kid, Ilya Molina? And I'm like, I've been hearing about this kid since it was like, guys, guys. <laughs> in my defense, <laughs> I didn't say that. Yeah. I did not. I didn't bring it up. What person at Crooked is stupid enough to say to Kendra, hey, have you heard about this figure skater? They deserve whatever's coming to them. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'm going to say. What will you say? We're talking about Ilya, and I'm just going to say, if you, if this got you interested in skating and you want to see some like great performances from Worlds, watch Donovan Carrillo's short program. Watch Jason Brown's short program. There's more interesting skating out there. And while he, again, he's so good, he's really, really good, there's, it's just, there's better skating. Okay. In my opinion, I did think it was cool when he jumped in the air and turned all those times and then landed without falling. I, I thought, it was I mean, yes, yes, it's really. Uh, I like his little suit. That's honestly my. I love and, that. And, yes. and it was to the Succession theme song. Yeah, great yeah. Song. really great. Did you hear know? about that? Wait, did he. So the other crazy thing about this program. So um, Yuma Kagiyama was in first. You can see his score on the bottom there. He had a one ten. That's his tech score that Ilya's trying to reach. 11069, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. I'm listening. Um, usually, like, and even at, like, little rinky-dink competitions that I did when I was younger, you're backstage behind the ice while anyone is skating. You're never watching a program because that fucks with your mental. He watched Yuma perform. Some people like to watch. That's and then cool. it was, he had planned that quad axle in his rundown that commentators said and judges triple. got. It triple. was a triple. And he decided to go up. That's cool. Yes. See, now I'm back that's on cool. board. I think that's cool. That's yeah. cool. I, I don't love it. I just, I, I mean, you know I love it. Maybe, he, maybe what you don't love is somebody's messing with the status quo. Someone's someone's shaking this game Actually, up. Actually, he's outsider. not mess- Oh, oh no, he's not really messing with the status quo. Yes, he got the highest. He does have the highest score for Worlds. Uh, uh, Nathan Chen still has the highest combined total skate of all time, so he's still two points below Nathan. Okay. Nathan Chen, the uh, Susan Boyle of figure skating. Yeah, <laughs> actually, not at all. Nathan Chen, a, a very good looking young man. <laughs> Shout out to Nathan Chen, <laughs> incredibly good looking young man. We gotta end this fucking show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we go, you heard it here first and now second and several other times. Love It or Leave It has announced new tour dates. We are heading to Austin, D.C., Charlotte, Asheville, Boston, Madison, Chicago, and Pittsburgh. Maybe in some more places. We'll see how the tape holding those bowings together holds up. <laughs> to get tickets, some of the shows are almost sold out. So go to crooked.com slash events right now. And that's our show. Woo! I want to thank uh, Kendra on Ice. <laughs> Hallie on s- Wheels. All right. And Sarah on horseback. On horseback. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I want to thank the, all of you, the dear listeners. See you slut Saturday.